writing fiction, um, you never know when one of your characters will suddenly start to take on some of these things. So a friend of mine who's a writer, he actually keeps um, like a big cork board over his desk. And what he does is like throughout the day, if something captures his eye or something, you know, engages him, he'll write it on a scrap of paper or he'll, you know, on the back of a business card, on a napkin. And throughout the day, he collects all these things and then he posts them up on there. I'm Kenny Jean Baptiste. I'm a junior at York High. And I wanted to participate in this workshop because I definitely wanted to participate in the display of the writing just in general, whether I would go to the workshop or not. And when you came to the school talking about having the opportunity for the public to see my writing, that was also really important to me. So I decided to participate. And I like the idea that I get to have my voice heard. It's important for the students to be able to speak their mind about their education situation because it is their education and they do know what the problems with education are and what the highlights, you know, what the positive things are going on in their education. And a lot of adults and staff and school board members tend to belittle the students because, you know, they're not, it's not their line of work, they're not really professionals, but they are experiencing everything. So it's important to get their first person outlook and their first person information. We all have those days when we don't know what to write about. Mm -hmm. We don't know, you know, we're kind of stuck. So just stare at the wall, literally, right? Stare at that corkboard until he starts to see almost like a constellation. Like, mm -hmm. wait, this was connected to this, and because that's how our brains work. But sometimes we don't think of it that way. So, so the thing that you overheard a friend say mm -hmm. will connect maybe to something that you saw on TV, which will also connect to like a song that you heard. And before you know, it, you're like, wait, this is something maybe I'm interested in. All right, so. It's, it's really rough, but I'll try to make the best out of it. I should feel like a part of something bigger. Am I not a part of something bigger? The school represents the city, it represents the people, it represents the culture, the need, a need for change. Mr. Vito was talking a lot about the planning process before you start writing, and I think that was kind of cool to hear him talk about, you know, as a writer, being able to collect information from you know a bunch of different sources and just being out in the day, being able to hear something and say, how can I incorporate this into my writing and being able to bring everything together. And I think that helped a little bit because normally I'm a spontaneous writer and I can't really just plan things out, but the way he talked about it, it was easier for me to figure out what I want in my poem and what I want the readers to understand and get out of my poem. The voices of the choir through the hall. Then the sounds of a scale. B flat? No. D. She is sure of it. She knows the sound of a band. She loves the sound of a band. And to her left, the faint strings, the beautiful faint strings. She looks to me and smiles. She has found where she belongs. The question was, what does my perfect education look like? And I talked about, um, if perfection is even possible and I was talking about doubt and people thinking that we're not going to really come out of the hole that we're in but I do believe that there is room to better the system and I talked about what I wanted I said I want to go to a school and be surrounded by those who want to go to school I talked about how I want to be able to find myself and be directed how I should feel prepared and be anxious for the future one of my highlights that I actually decided to incorporate into my poem was I should feel like a part of something bigger and feel valued and feel welcomed. And so mainly what I got out of my free writing was what am I feeling about the topic. So I think that was good. It was sort of like a self-exploration activity. I think if the students and the staff, you know, came together, we could make change. And the students of the school and the youth in the community do have the power to make change and change for the better. So I think that's a really good reason to participate in this. And that's why I chose to participate in this. And I hope that, you know, more people will see the student side of this and learn from it. <laughs> I'm trying to, like, make sure that I get every word right. But, um, yeah, I think I can give it a go. Is it on? Oh, <laughs> I should feel like a part of something bigger. Is the school not a part of something bigger? The school represents the city. It represents the people. It represents the culture. The need, 
the need for change. They say we're violent. They say we're poor. That's only because they see us, not know us. They see the outside, not the core. We are not what they say we are. We are better. We are more. Shine a light on our positivity, and you will then see what we stand for. She is following me. Her eyes scan the halls. Her footsteps slow. She is silent. Our shoes squeak on the clean floor. I speak. She nods. But does she hear? She continues to look around, reading the words on the wall, blankly staring at the girls who walk by. She is following me, but she is lost. Until we reach the music room, and her eyes focus, she stops moving and relaxes. The smooth, resonant voices of the choir sound through the hall. Then, the notes of the scale. B flat? No. D. She is sure of it. She knows the sound of a band. She loves the sound of a band. And to her left, the faint string. The beautiful, faint string. She looks to me and smiles. She has found where she belongs. You say you want to see change. You say you think we need change. You say it's time to make change. So stop talking and be change. To the future we'll start leaning. Grab a friend, make a friend, start a trend, so we can end this tradition of speaking without meaning. Thank you. We start clapping. A vision isn't something you just see. It's something you feel, something you know, something you should strive to be. A person isn't someone who just lives. They're someone who matters, someone who feels, someone who gives. Gives what they can to whatever they care about. Give what you can to the change you want to see sprout, despite all the doubt. A city isn't something that just has power. It's something that has purpose, something that has people, it's something that's ours. Ours to love and to watch grow. Ours to change and to watch grow. Be a part of something you're not ashamed to know. And lastly, the children who warm up our hearts should at least be blessed with a beautiful start. For they are the future. They make, they make the, the city, city flow. flow. And the way that you show them is the way that their children will go. So let's break this old cycle. Or better yet, start a new one. Violence, negativity, animosity, in these schools, you'll find none. So ask yourself, what are you doing to better your city, to let your town shine? And this town will work together, for the city is yours and mine. One, two, three, four.